Preparing a website for an international audience comes with a lot of technical complexities. For example, how do you manage multiple languages flexibly and efficiently with Hugo? Also, how do you make the appropriate design adjustments for each language in a way that doesn't result in redundant CSS? Today's talk is all about answering those questions. I want to demystify internationalization with Hugo. And I'll do this by walking through the technical details behind a recent project of mine. First up, a little bit about me. My name is John Yablonski. I'm a designer, a developer, and I'm the creator of a website called Laws UX. Now, Laws UX is focused on making psych complex psychology heuristics accessible to more designers through an interactive resource that collects those that are the most relevant to user experience design. And underneath the hood, Laws UX is powered by Hugo in addition to Netlify. Now, I absolutely love the speed of Hugo build times, and that coupled with Hugo Pipes, the built-in asset pipeline, makes working on this website a lot of fun and really easy. Now, recently I asked myself a question. How do I get started with internationalizing this website? I want to reach more people across the globe and make it more valuable for more designers. And it didn't take long to become completely overwhelmed with the amount of information out there and really not know where to start. So today is all about sharing what I learned throughout the process. We'll begin with the basics followed by how to deal with your translated content, and then how to redirect people to the appropriate uh, place once they land on your website based on their language. And then finally, how you fine tune the website for each language. Let's start with the basics. The first step is configuring your website to support multiple languages. Now, Hugo enables you to define each language that you intend to support via the global config file. Now this is the config.toml file. And you'll first need to set your default language followed by settings for each individual language. So here you see I have uh, language code equals en, that's my default. And then I can do language specific settings after that. Now there's plenty of useful things that you can define, but the most common are of course the language name the base URL, or where this translated content will live, the weight, or how Hugo prioritizes this language, and then the description that will show up on the site. Now, in the case of Arabic, I also need to define what the language direction is, which is right to left. I set a different weight, and then a custom description that will overwrite the site default description. Now let's talk about adding the right HTML tags. The, the HTML attributes necessary for enabling translations is actually pretty minimal. You first start, start with the language property on the HTML tag for the current language. And of course, Lang uh, Hugo gives us a, a great template uh, tag for that called language.lang, followed by the language direction. Now, if this is set in the file, it'll show up here. And if not, it'll default to left or right. That's the basics. Let's move on to content. Next up is deciding how you will structure your files to support multiple languages. Now, there are two ways to manage your content translations via multilingual mode. You can do that by translation by file name or translation by content directory. Now, both methods ensure that each page is assigned a language and is linked to its counterpart translation. For example, Laws UX uses translation by file name uh, so that each version of each page lives side by side, and that makes managing and, and updating these individual files really easy. Now, once Hugo builds the site, it builds it into language specific directories at the root of your project. In addition to, of course, the um, uh, this Netlify TOML file, which we'll go into later. 
Now it's time to add our translated content. I, of course, worked with a great team to translate all the Laws of UX content in a separate document and then bringing it over and, and pasting it into my page specific markdown files was really easy. I would do that just like normal, just like the English version of the content. And you can use your short codes and everything you're already accustomed to. But what about the text that's global, like navigation links? It's not specific to any individual page, but shared across all the pages. Well, for that, we have I18N, which is an abbreviation for inter internationalization. And we can set configuration files that enable specific strings to be represented by tags that are then transformed into a translated value if that language specific configuration file exists. So if you look over to the left hand sidebar, you'll see that there's an I18N directory. And within that, I have files that represent each language I'm supporting, uh, and then the file extension, which is YAML. Now, as long as the language file exists in this directory and there's an ID associated with the, the item, it's going to output that translation string. And the way that looks is here. Like, so you'll have an I18 in template tag with an ID of menu, which will output the translated string relevant to whatever the current language is. Let's move on to redirects. We got to get people to the right place once they land on the website. The way we do that is since Hugo creates a separate directory for each language, we need to kind of route them to that language based on um, what their preferred language is. So I mentioned Netlify and Netlify offers up a Netlify TOML file, which is essentially a settings file where I can set things like redirects. Now this one I have highlighted uh, is, is based on a condition that the language set by the, the user in their preferred browser is Arabic. And this, in that case, this redirect will take place. And what it will do is take any traffic to any page on the website and redirect it to the Arabic version of that page. Now I'm doing the same thing for English. So if English is set as the preferred language in the browser, it's going to redirect to the English version of the requested page. And then finally, if there's no page set at all, we'll, re we'll default to the English version of the page. We're almost done. All right, let's move on. Fine tuning. So how do I make CSS adjustments between the individual languages? Well, for that, we have CSS logical properties. Now, logical properties were used in order to avoid writing duplicative CSS in order to make adjustments for elements when switching between left to right and right to left layout. For example, Laws of UX has these banners where you have a title and a graphic, and they live side by side. Now, of course, for the Arabic version, they're swapped. And the code to make this happen is pretty straightforward. We have a banner container that has a height of 100%, a display of flex, which ensures that the title and the graphic are beside each other. And then we align the item centered. And then the banner graphic itself has a margin left to ensure that there's some separation between it and the title. The problem with this is that that's specific to a left to right language like English. And I have to override that for right to left languages like Arabic. So I have to zero out that margin and then I have to apply a margin right instead. And this ends up with more code, which is, you know, across an entire code base becomes a lot more maintenance. So what CSS logical properties enable me to do is apply my styling in a way that's language agnostic and it's kind of directionally aware. So I can use margin inline instead of margin left or right to apply the appropriate spacing 
without having to later override that based on a specific um, language direction. And what this means is less code, easier maintenance, and better performance overall. Now, the Mozilla developer docs provide a lot of great information around CSS logical properties, which I reference quite a bit. And there's a lot more than just margin and padding that you can use these properties for. So I encourage everyone to take a look if you're interested. I'll also say that um, browser support for CSS logical properties is really, really good. Unprefixed, it's at 92.71% globally. That's not bad at all. But we can even get to almost 96% if we prefix this code. So how do I get CSS logical properties prefix? My favorite tools to do this is PostCSS coupled with the plugin Auto Prefixer. Now, PostCSS is a tool for transforming standard CSS with JavaScript. And it, it gives you the ability to use plugins such as Auto Prefixer, which will automatically prepin vendor prefixes to your CSS properties that require them. So the way you get this to work is you first install the post CSS CLI and auto prefixer via NPM. And then you set a browser list, which is essentially settings that tells auto prefixer how far back you want to go as far as browser support. Now I can say, for example, last three versions, which will look at the last three versions of all major browsers, and it'll prefix my CSS output code appropriately. You also need a post-CSS config file, which really gives you the ability to export out that auto prefixer plugin. And then once you've done this, all you need to do is pass a reference to that config file in how you're calling your styles, and it automatically generates your prefixes when it's outputted into a single CSS file. You don't really have to do anything else. It's kind of abstracted away from you at this point. And it's just adding those prefixes for much deeper feature support. Next up, how do we pick fonts that are specific to our language? I've always used IBM Plex as the primary font for Laws of UX because it's a really well-crafted font. And fortunately, this is a type family that supports multiple languages, including Arabic. Now, in order to load these fonts, I'm using the standard at font face declaration. And then finally, I'm storing references to the appropriate font for each via CSS variables that get used throughout the code base. What this does is ensures that the necessary fonts are loaded depending on which version the site's viewed. For example, if the language attribute on the root of the site is set to English, well then I'm loading English specific versions of both IBM Plex and IBM Plex Mono. But if that language attribute is set to Arabic, I'm going to load the Arabic specific versions of, the, of those fonts. And what this does is ensures that I don't get any strange glyphs or characters that don't show appropriately because I've chosen to, to display the text in a language that the font doesn't support fully. So what about giving users the ability to manually switch between languages? Well, that's really easy by providing a language switcher. And the code to, to list out those, those languages is actually really simple. All I need to do is range through all the translations on the website, pass in a permalink to the link itself, and then reference each language by its language name, which if you remember, we set in the config file at the beginning. And that gives us the translated version of the website. Now I've recently launched this project and, it's, and the website is now ready for a multitude of languages, which I've got planned in the near future. I hope what I've shared today really helps to demystify 
how you can internationalize your site with Hugo, as well as fine tune the site to ensure that it's great, it works great for users coming from any language. Thank you. Thank you.